munchkins and viewers alike, it's me Munchie and welcome back to a Munchie Talk discussion time. Today I'm going to be talking all about two major pet stores. We're going to be talking about Petco first and then PetSmart. And the reason for this discussion is I want to reach out to you guys on the internet who are not aware yet of the changes that are happening within these pet stores. You guys like to push for better care as well as I and there is a few things that are either a plus or a minus that these companies are currently doing right now so I hope you enjoyed this little discussion because munchie talks are all about discussion and let's get into it just a little note if anybody's wondering about the background here this is my foster home and some hamsters currently right now like the cage you see back there is a temporary setup so don't worry about that guys this is just rescuing and we recently took in this little Sheila here so she is gonna be put inside a bigger enclosure soon so if anyone is wondering out there I foster rescue and adopt out animals so I run my house like I would a rescue because I knew I was gonna be getting some questions about that so might as well address it now so Petco first we have a good and wonderful announcement from Petco and that is Petco is getting rid of by I believe the beginning or maybe possibly around the end of 2019 all brands of cat dog and looks like small animals birds and reptile food that have artificial ingredients and fillers in them so that is wonderful to hear places around my area such as mud bay are all natural stores in your area it may be different and you may have other natural pet stores too but hearing that Petco is taking the step from becoming just a generic pet store that's very compared to PetSmart into a natural food store trying to push out brands that are disgusting and terrible for your pet and bringing in better ones that is wonderful to hear especially since Petco has a big partnership with a lot of the bad brands out there like Purina, Science Hill and other brands like that that have fillers in them. Purina is like the number one in my opinion that has the worst protein and nutrition that you could possibly be feeding your animals they've made a push to go all natural themselves which I assume some of the products will still remain but the majority of products out there usually consumers are not aware that they have filler ingredients in there if you guys remember Beneful it was a big story and lawsuit I believe of several years ago where dogs were vomiting throwing up after eating it and dying because something was not right with that food. That is a Purina brand. So unfortunately, I do not like Purina and my dog started losing her fur when I had her on Purina a long time ago. She's been switched to a better, more nutritious food like Canadate, which I highly recommend if anybody out there is wondering about some good food. Canadate, cat and dog, really good stuff. I love that it's family owned business because there's not many around anymore. But Petco is going to be pushing out those brands. So let me just share with you what they have said on their website. So it says here, turning our back on artificial food. When you love pets, you do what's right for them, which is why we're setting a bold new statement for nutrition. Welcome to the new Petco. Love is never artificial. At Petco, we're taking a stand as the only major retailer of pet food to eliminate artificial ingredients. That's the bold standard you see when you love pets. Pet Smarter. At Petco, we love pets a lot, which is why we're doing the right thing and taking a stand against red dye BHA, and many, many more artificial ingredients. Chew on this. Red dye, BHA, artificial flavors. Most pet food is full of it. At Petco, we're taking a stand against these artificial ingredients and so much more. Sink your teeth into that. What ingredients are we eliminating? Benzaldehyde, FD and C, red number three, two other ingredients I do not wish to pronounce right now, and much, much more. If we don't believe it's good for pets, it has no place at Petco. Why is this important for your pet? It's simple. We believe quality food leads to healthier, happier pets. We'd rather remove pet food containing artificial ingredients than wait to find out if they're harmful. There has already been studies shown that adding fillers and adding these things could actually lead to a dog's decrease in overall health and life, especially when it comes to organs such as the liver, the kidney, the heart. It's already been studied. What is the timing? We'll start removing products that don't meet our standards in January and complete the process by May 2019. Okay, so I was close. I thought it was end of year, but yeah, that's right. It's it's not end of year. No ifs, ands, or fluffy butts about it. So that is amazing to hear that Petco is taking a stand and saying we're going to remove that. Now, I also tweeted about this on my Twitter. For those of you who don't follow, go follow. The links are down below in this description. 
And when I tweeted at Petco saying that I'm very proud of them and happy, one of my munchkins commented back asking if that's also going to happen for small pets. And Petco says they are looking into not just only cats and dogs, but also their other departments for getting the right nutrition for their pets. So KT does have a lot of diets in their food and or ingredients that might not be suitable. Now they're gonna be a little bit different from say cats or dogs because that stuff is regulated so much more than small animals. So it's gonna take Petco longer to figure out what they need to pull for small pets, but it looks like they will be pulling possibly small pets by the end of May of 2019 if they have done their research and know exactly what is going to happen. So here's my thoughts real quick on this. Uh, one is going to get people to stop going to Petco to get really crappy food and instead all of their money is going to be put into say PetSmart and or grocery stores because that's where a lot of this crappy food comes from anyways and is easily bought there like Imes. Ugh. Do not feed your cat or dog Imes. I do not recommend it at all. Pedigree is still on the commercial saying that this is really good dog food. And yeah, sure, it's been around for ages, but it's not that good when it comes to dog's health. Some of our relatives are using Pedigree and their dogs are extremely overweight and not getting the nutrition they deserve. So at first this might be a loss for Petco thinking, oh, well, you're gonna take a majority of the products out of your stores, but people don't realize that they're gonna be filled in with better stuff, stuff that you can probably probably only find from natural pet food stores. So that is really great to hear that they're bringing in stuff if they're getting rid of all that. But I am a little bit concerned because Petco and PetSmart both have prescription brand of dog and cat food. And even though Petco doesn't have vets on site all the time, so you can't get the prescription except for on their website. And I would have to go to say PetSmart to get like a UTI formula for my boys because they're currently on a UTI formula. It's going to be a problem because Science Hill and Royal Cannon and Purina are the only top three that are veterinarian prescriptions only. This is gonna be a huge problem, but from my understanding from what some Petco employees are saying is that Petco is trying to say, hey, Science Cell, Purina, you know what? We want you guys to start putting real ingredients and better ingredients in your food. So we want you to get out or to improve and we'll bring you in our stores. Because even though Petco will possibly at first be losing money to its competitors, a lot of people shop for these brands at Petco. So the company, the food company, is going to be losing money alongside Petco unless they change their ways. Already, I believe it is Science Hill pushed out some bioactive or some new line when it comes to better ingredients in their formulas, but they're not exactly what people are currently on right now, which is like stuff for hairballs, stuff for lightweight. I'm just thinking cats, by the way, because I have to use Science Hill, unfortunately, for my UTI cats. But anyways, UTI, oral, light, and the list goes on for hairballs and other things. So hopefully in the future we'll see exactly what Petco's move is and I would definitely love to be logging in a Petco that's already an updated and seeing new products and just going in and seeing the changes they're gonna be making. So good luck Petco and hopefully your store becomes a much better store, especially since the next store we're gonna be talking about is PetSmart, which PetSmart is on the decline. Woo. There he goes. Recently, you guys have noticed that PetSmart's been coming out with new products, especially during like, say, seasonal merch where they try to put out seasonal stuff in every department, cat, dog, fish, bird, reptile. Recently, they came out, I believe it was at the beginning of the summertime, the Tiny Tails line, and they just pushed these out and everybody was in uproar. I've been reviewing them and they are very lackluster, less than ideal for hamsters to be stuffed in where new time owners are gonna make the horrible mistake of just buying one cage because it costs so much money in the first place and just stuffing whatever hamster they get, whether it be a robo, a dwarf, or a Syrian into this little tiny cage thinking that is going to be enough for it. And unfortunately, PetSmart is just on the decline in general because they are in debt. Yes, you heard me right. They owe a lot of money. And unfortunately, within the last, I think it was a year or two, that they bought Chewy.com. Now, not many people know this when they say, oh, I shop on Chewy, I'm not shopping at PetSmart. Murder Petco, you are actually still supporting PetSmart. So unfortunately for PetSmart, they are not going to be chugging out a bunch of well-updated 
needed care for small animals and come out with stuff like tiny tails because it's easier to sell. They already have it marked at a very high price. It's easier to make because big cages unfortunately don't sell. And so they have to price them higher because they have to be made somehow. And the cost of making them is so high that they themselves are <laughs> in a dead pile. So unfortunately for PetSmart, they are doing this whole thing where they're trying to make money for themselves, try to get something back, but it's not gonna work in the end. And honestly, I don't know where PetSmart's gonna be going. I honestly don't want to see some place to be run out of business, losing a bunch of jobs in the process. But at the same time, around my area, I have not seen a PetSmart open up in a couple of years because there's been a lot, and I mean a lot of Petco's that have been popping up in my area and there's so many. When I went out at the beginning of the year to find my own adoptable hamster in their adoption program, because PetSmart and Petco do have an adoption program, if you ask about it, where you can find adoptable pets that have been surrendered and or in their program because they've been there for too long, have behavioral needs, special needs, etc. Then I found out just from calling around so many places, Petco is overpowering PetSmart. PetSmart to me was always the warehouse store, whereas Petco was just the general store. You go in, you find some things, you get out. But it looks like the tables are now officially turning, especially for my area. So it sucks because when I went in today to get I guess I can show you guys this. This will be kind of a teaser to one of the bad cage reviews. But when I went in today to unfortunately get this monstrosity because I'm doing reviews and I'm testing out the products, exchanging, returning, exchanging, returning them, I picked up this, which is an attachment to a cage that I will be reviewing soon. And it is the Tiny Tails Maze. Horrible. But I want to see how big this actually is. But unfortunately, at check out and I get this so much at PetSmart because PetSmart's telling people to push these down people's throats here. You know what the woman at the counter said to me? Oh, a tiny tails. Oh, those are great cages. Great. They're really great. They're costly. They're expensive. They are breakable. They are plastic. They are terrible. They are claustrophobic. There is so much negativity from these cages alone. I was told by people commenting under my PetSmart Tiny Tales reviews that, hey, I work at PetSmart and hey, they're forcing me to tell people to buy these cages. If PetSmart is saying, hey, we have this new line and you must tell people that it's good and to come back and buy more and oh, hey, if you got this, maybe you should get this from Tiny Tales. It is such a sad gimmick. So today I don't know if the lady was legit serious because she thought that it was an actual good cage and a good brand or that she you know wants to keep her job because hey yeah uh, kind of have to recommend that or else you know maybe you're not gonna get a bonus you know because there's such a thing as bonuses if your store performs very well and is buying a certain amount of product or a certain amount of their product line then they get as a whole a store bonus. But yeah if um, PetSmart is making sales for tiny tails then that's a plus to them but just letting you guys know when I do return these if they are used and are broken used by small rodents and things like that they cannot make a sale on it it has to be returned and then they have to throw this out in the back which means hey they can't sell this anymore they just lost that money for making that product and trying to push it out on store floors so that is what's happening there not liking the situation with PetSmart I really wish that more people that I've talked to with PetSmart would actually be like, oh ma'am, oh I just want to let you know ma'am, um, that's not really a good cage. Like every time I go, they're so happy I'm buying those cages and I am freaking out and I literally had to tell one lady because she didn't understand at all what we were trying to advocate here, that these are terrible and she still thought that they were good cages and then when I saw her again making the exchange, which I'm probably not going to go to her again because this really irritated me, but she was like, oh Oh, did this cage not work out for you this time? Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm like, lady, I just told you the other day that these cages I was doing reviews for and they were bad cages and I explained why they were bad cages, but no, apparently, oh no, this cage didn't work out. Like, lady, I just told you these cages don't work out in the first place and I just listed this long, big details and you were so fascinated because you're like, oh, well, I thought they were all right. It's like, well, mm, it drives me crazy when people don't listen. They want to make all the sales, sales, but it feels so bad. La 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 la. 
it's really frustrating when you see people make bad decisions and so if nobody at pet stores are trying to make the right decisions by educating others about proper care and what they should be buying instead it's sad that people are letting me walk out the door with really bad decision makings but hey I know better because I'm doing reviews but it's just sad to see that people think these are great so that's why we're on here that's why we advocate for better care that's why all of the small animal advocates out there breeders rescues and people on YouTube trying to let you know what is bad what is not bad and that's all I want to say to you guys today so thanks for listening to me babble I want to hear your thoughts what do you think about Petco making the right decision to push out crap food and bring in new food and hopefully get good natural food coming in or what do you think about PetSmart and them trying to make money because they're in debt and making poor choices Choices themselves that they're going to make even more poor choices like the tiny tails line just so they can try to make some money back and be on the better path to getting out of debt which is a mistake in my opinion but I want to hear your thoughts and thank you guys so much for watching today if you like the discussion hit like to show your support and thanks for watching I'll see you in the next video bye bye